Okay, so if, <laughs> so if this was a tough question, let me give you even a harder and inflammatory question. And if you don't want to answer, I will totally un- un- understand. I started uh, writing a book about artificial intelligence, and then I thought, mm, maybe we need to like devote one chapter to, in- to human intelligence, because after all, your artificial intelligence strives to imitate human intelligence. And this uh, chapter became a whole book. Yes. Over 400 pages of human intelligence. And part, since you mentioned the Asian education system, part of what they do in Singapore is that they give you a test on when you are like six or seven. And this test separates different kids to different schools. Like there are like the professional schools and the more academic schools. And what we and 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 they just and those tests are basically IQ or intelligent tests. And my question is because if I read your book, how to excel at math and science, even if you flunk algebra. One thing that is not mentioned in this great book is the thing of human differences in cognitive abilities. And some people uh, cannot learn math or cannot learn uh, uh, algebra. I know for myself that uh, that I'm not good at university math, okay? I know I can see people and uh, because I see people in the academia all the time, which are much brighter than me. And I know that if I would have gone to like a major in math, it wouldn't go because I'm not smart enough to do math in the university level. And I cannot contribute anything. I can contribute in many other disciplines, but I cannot contribute in math. And my question is, what about human differences or in cognitive abilities? How do you approach this very, very important yet inflammatory subject? Oh, that's such a great question. And it's so funny because I am just wrapping up the scripts of two videos on neurodiversity and how how people really learn differently. Just to very quickly uh, give a sense, there's two different main learning superhighways in the brain by which you can deposit your sets of neural links in long-term memory, your memories. One is the declarative system through the hippocampus. The other is the procedural learning uh, pathway through the basal ganglia. Each type of sets of neural links actually gives different capacities. So you can learn a vocabulary list, for example, through the uh, hippocampal system for a foreign language, but you can't use it very quickly. Only if you learn it through that procedural pathway Do you actually, can you speak the language quickly and fluently? But um, some people, so one way to categorize many learning differences is by differences in their procedural or their declarative learning systems. So for example, those with dyslexia can have severe challenges with learning through the procedural system. Um, The same with, Um, dyspraxia uh, and other sort of related kinds of things. So um, a little bit of that, and they can still learn okay, but but the more you go along those lines, the harder it becomes to learn. So let's take Steven Spielberg, for example. He has dyslexia. When he's reading movie scripts, it takes him twice as long to read a movie script as it does other people but this doesn't mean he doesn't read movie scripts. It just means when he does read it, his condition makes it harder, but at the same time, it makes him pay more attention to what's going on. Um, So um, should, let's see, um, there's clear evidence that autism, for example, or the autism spectrum can, um, can, enhance procedural learning and perhaps minimize your ability to learn through the declarative system. So um, the thing is, we can't put all learners in a box, but at the same time, 
if we treat everyone as completely individual in their learning, which is the true way it actually is, we, it would become so complicated to try to teach that we can't, we couldn't really teach very well. So we generally teach to the sort of the midpoint, people who are able to learn through both systems pretty well. But I think it's really important to realize that some people uh, really will struggle with, um, you know, procedural type learning. And they might, might struggle with ideas like, uh, with struggle with even learning the multiplication tables because that procedural system helps with that type of uh, with that type of learning, but they I can still that, learn math in a different way. Um, I think that it's like Immanuel Kant saying that schools is for the mediocre because the bright will succeed even without school and the weak won't succeed even with school. But I think that you uh, you don't you don't treat the very the 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 pinpoint hard subject that some people, no matter how hard they work, will never be able to acquire, to understand cer certain ideas. Would you agree that this statement is true for some people? I, I think that statement is absolutely true, um, but there can be, sometimes there, you know, sometimes it's exactly as you say, but sometimes there's surprises as well. So for example, a person with dyslexia, they, they can, sometimes they can't even read the words on a page, but they can look at images and see patterns there that nobody else can see. Um, but, they, but with your permission, I think that although the Steven Spielberg uh, example is correct, it's like, it's a bad example since it's a romantic example. Okay, and the US Army doesn't recruit anyone with IQ of below 85 because after 100 years of research, it came to the conclusion that no matter what the training process will be, I cannot train anyone with IQ of 85 and below to be beneficial for the US Army. And the US Army has, as you know, many, many, many different jobs. Not all the people in the US Army are Navy SEALs and not all the people in the US Army are intelligence. And although this, after 100 years of research, they cannot train anyone with IQ of below of 85. And usually when we say and we think about education and learning and online learning and Coursera and edX and all the great guys, Andrew Neg is a genius, Daphne Koller is a genius, Anata Gwaral is a genius, Sebastian, wow, all the great guys. And it seems like they don't understand that not all population are like them. Well, that's true. And a lot of the top Coursera, I mean, the Coursera universities are by their very nature, the best universities in the world. And so, they often teach kind of expecting their students to be amongst the best students in the world, just like they get at Harvard, Yale or whatever. Um, but I, I'd like to flip this around. Um, yes. Be my guest. <laughs> you, you know, uh, what, what I've been, what we've focused on through most, most of this discussion is people with average or above IQs. We absolutely, uh, if, if you have a low IQ, it makes learning more difficult in, in every sense. But at the same time, um, I know a, a group of disabled students um, with IQs of 70 and below who were, you know, uh, they were just institutionalized and then they were taught some techniques about how to learn effectively. And do you know that these students even began attending college? Now, were they superstars? No, I didn't know it. And it is very surprising because on this podcast, I have spoken with the most prestigious IQ researchers in the world. And I think I'm very, uh, I know the literature, even the modern literature. And this is very surprising fact. If one, if someone is an IQ of 70 can attend college, this is a very, very surprising fact. It, and, you know, uh, what they were doing was taking introductory elementary courses, but they were told that they could never take anything. 
and they never even thought of themselves as having any ability to learn. But once they learned through a very long training program of learning what is the Pomodoro technique, what is focused and diffuse, they need to give themselves time. They can learn these things. And then once they have these learning tools, they are actually able to use them. Are they learning more slowly and not as well, at, perhaps as, as others with a, a average or above IQ? Absolutely. But it's not like they can't learn at all. Are there going to be people who have a, a you know, very substantive brain damage that is going to make it so they can't learn? Yes. They're, you know, obviously that's going to be the case. But people can be um, surprisingly resilient and, you know, and able to learn things. And, and I think one thing we have to be careful for, uh, uh, careful of as teachers is we can look at some kid and say, you know, that's, that's the village idiot sitting back there. When in fact, that can be a, a student who's got some real extraordinary talents. And there's lots and lots of stories of exactly that kind of thing. Even Nobel Prize winners who were, you know, stigmatized and anathemized as being, uh, you know, too stupid to learn. Yes, so. but it's like uh, Malcolm Gladwell, David and Goliath, when he said like, he had like elite institute cognitive disorder. And he says basically, sometimes it is better for you to be a big fish in a small pond make, and being like the best student in and not and not the the war student in MIT. If you are a war student in an Ivy League university, you will be much behind the best student in Brown University, for example. So there is something about the psychology that of being the worst, being last that basically paralyze you. Be, make you handicap, and if you if your cognitive abilities are not suited for Ivy League universities, so going into those Ivy League university will be a bad policy for you, because the oh, mentality, yeah. the psychology will you, of you will be I'm the last, and this is what Gladwell says in David and Goliath. So so sometimes the Ivy League universities, the elite institute, yes, Google, Facebook sometimes walks against you and not go walk with you. Wow, that was great. I would love to see you join our great channels community. Come, check it out.